When somebody brings you something and you're the first person to bring it to life, you can't beat that. I'm Canadian and I'm really shy. I'm in New York City and I'm with these Broadway people and it's a very tight knit community uh, down there. And I was this Canadian, whoever he was being brought in to be half the star in this show. And all these people were upset by it because they have their own set of people in New York. Who the hell is this guy? And I'm just standing there in the corner and I hear, oh, the, 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 uh, let me go back. The, the writer has been down there and he said, and there's all these crazy people. There's a guy named Meatloaf. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. So I'm standing in the corner and I hear, hey, you. And I go uh, like this and I, me, and there's this behemoth, you know, with a cowboy hat and cowboy boots and he weighs like 250. And I went, me? And he says, yeah, you, come here. So when somebody that big says that to you, it's like, you're right there. And he said, uh, I know who you are. And I said, and I know who you are. Why, why aren't you up in front of the, them cameras? Because ABC, uh, Good Morning America was there to do the first day of rehearsals. And I said, same reason you're not, I don't care. You know, people are jumping, look at me in front of the camera. He said, good, let's go have lunch. And I'm like, oh, but, but, but he says, ah, they won't miss us. So we go to a place called Beefsteak Charlie's around the corner and we just talk and come back and he starts singing an Everly Brothers tune. I don't suppose you've heard of the Everly Brothers. I've, I've heard of them. Not a, not a big fan, but I know their songs. Well, you know, at the time they were huge and it was all two part uh, harmony. And I was, since I've been singing harmony since I was four, it was a piece of cake. So he started singing this song, I believe it was Wake Up Little Susie, and I jumped up to the third and he stopped and I said, what's wrong? And he said, nobody sings higher than me. And meets from Texas, from Dallas. And I said, well, I guess I do. Y'all got to meet Jimmy. Y'all got to meet Jimmy. And I'm like, Jimmy? He said, yeah, Jimmy, we're doing a record together. And I'm like, what? He said, yeah, you got to meet him. You got to meet him. So the next day, he said, come on, let's go. And we go up to this rehearsal room upstairs. We were at Radio City Music Hall. And here I walk in and there's Jim Steinman. So introduced, first day in New York, I meet Meatloaf. And the second day I meet Jim Steinman. Sort of in the stars, I guess. History repeated. Welcome back to History Repeating. I'm beyond thrilled to share this episode with you. As you saw from the beginning, this week will be our first episode featuring Rory Dodd, a singer whose voice you definitely know, but whose name you might not be familiar with. His list of credits include Total Eclipse of the Heart, It's All Coming Back to Me Now, Uptown Girl, and of course, Bat Out of Hell, one of the biggest records of all time with sales well over 40 million and counting as we speak. Rory met Meatloaf pretty fast, and he knew Bat was something special. But it took a while for record execs to see that too. To get a deal took a while, because uh, nobody could understand it. Because you got this really big guy who had this operatic tenor uh, and this long-haired guy on a piano and then skinny Canadian guy uh, and Ellen Foley at, and and we just we played we small gigs around but we'd also um, go into record company offices and, and sing we're trying to get a deal and it took about a year and a half uh, before we were signed uh, Cleveland International Records a guy named Steve Popovich brilliant, uh, had worked at Epic and uh, wanted to go home to Cleveland. And they gave him his own label. And he was looking for artists. And we were one of the first ones. He came in and looked at us and was like, oh, this is interesting. And he said, OK, let's do it. So it was like suddenly we were signed. And then we got Todd Rundgren, who came in. We were trying to get producers. And he came in. I don't know if you know Rundgren at all. Yeah. Oh, we toddy. We talked to each other in Scottish accents. Rooney me boys. Oh, we toddy. Um, but he thought at the beginning, 
he was he just looked at he said oh yeah okay he thought we were riffing on Springsteen he thought we were a takeoff band and uh we weren't you know you know and it's great because how many kids from Port Dover can say they sang on the third biggest selling record of all time Rory had the privilege of hearing that in its entirety performed by Meat and Steinman and nobody else an experience most would dream of, and it's one he'll never forget. I knew it the first time I heard him. I was in a little room, like I said, a probably 10 foot by 15 foot room with a grand piano with the lid up, and they proceeded to sing the whole record to me, just piano voice, and I'm like, because that voice ran through it and the songs were just exceptional. A lot of people didn't understand them, uh, but coming from theater, uh, Jim was very theatrical. That's why he, all he wanted was to get his show up on Broadway. Um, and of course, they finally got Bat up in England. Uh, and he lived for that, basically, because he died very shortly thereafter. But I knew immediately, yeah, absolutely the first time I heard it. Once they got signed and recorded the record, the reception for it was lackluster at best. But that's not because it wasn't good, it's because it wasn't heard. So they decided to take it on the road. And eventually, things took off like a bat out of hell. What happened, I was a kid. You know, and I just, the fact that we'd got a deal, or that these guys even wanted me. I mean, you, you run through your whole life, I was never sure. I always thought someday they'd wake up and See, I pulled the wool over their eyes. Um, we got the deal. We, we had the record in the can. It was done. And we lost the label. Suddenly, we didn't have a deal anymore. Actually, it was just before. And so Todd Rundgren produced it himself. Bat Out of Hell cost $78,000 to produce. And it's at $43 million copies now that's nuts it, it happened because we went on the road we toured for 10 months okay around the world we worked that record and the first time we heard it on the radio uh it was supposed to be means nothing to you but uh the big radio station in new york at that point was a, a station called wnew you, you can look them up they were just massive fm station they were supposed to break the record because Popovich had a deal of uh, his old friends with somebody and get a call one night and Steinman is just going out of his gourd and he's yelling, it's on PIX, it's on PIX, which was WPIX. So I ran to the radio and turned it on and there's paradise by the dashboard light. Out of the blue, meat starts flipping out, jumping around the room, knocks down a lamp. And I call my mom, 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 I'm on the radio. You're not going to believe this, I'm on the radio. Um, and we hit the road and we opened for, we shouldn't have done it, but we opened for cheap trick. I mean, we don't even rehearse for two weeks. So we, we hired a band, we, we um, interviewed and heard guys play and we hired the band and we'd only had two weeks rehearsal and we went and opened for cheap trick and got booed off the stage, which is not the nicest way to start. Meat had never been booed in his life. And so he starts pulling rabbits out of the hat. Y'all know Ted Nugent? Y'all know Ted Nugent? I sung with Ted Nugent. And I had done it all. So he was doing these lead vocals. Why don't you come? They said they need backgrounds. So I did like four tunes in an hour and a half. Uh, so he tried to do a, a Ted Nugent tune, but they didn't want to hear about it. We come home to New York. He flips out. I'm the only one that can deal with them. So a three-day drunk. Uh, then we did a place in New Jersey called Creations, uh, was the next gig that we did, so it should have been our first one. And because they'd been playing um, Paradise on the radio, it sat maybe 100, not sat, it was a club, so there was like 150 people there, and we blew the lid off the place. You knew it was going to happen because before the gig, there was meat, loaf, meat, loaf, meat, loaf. So you figured it, it might be good, but that's instilled in him uh it was almost he saw it like like a curtain coming up he was standing there and it was like we're god 
And we hit the road, like I said, 10 months, nonstop. And you work a record like that, it's great. Because it broke over in Canada, might I add, being a proud boy, uh, was our first gold record. Bat Out of Hell remains one of the most unique and beloved records in history. And we have lots more content to share from our interview with Rory. So look out for those episodes coming soon, only on History Repeated.